Um, good morning, and thank you for introducing me. And I would now start to talk about um, our research we have did in um, psychological gender roles versus biological sex in channel choices. And yeah, my talk is divided into five parts. Uh, at first, I will give you a short introduction, um, followed by how we've constructed our research. After that, um, I will talk a little bit about the methods methods we have used, and finally, um, we ca I can show you the results um, in order to discuss them and give you some implications for future work. Yeah, so nowadays um, there are so many new technologies um, which are offering um, new sales channels for customers to purchase uh, products and services in different channels. And this in turn um, changed the consumer behavior, so it is uh, very important to understand um, why the customers decide uh, for the particular channels and when you look at the figures, you can see that the change of consumer behavior um, is, yeah, have uh, some implications for um, companies who, who are offering multiple channels because um, they are offering uh, many channels at the same time depending on different costs and um, if customers uh, change uh, switching the channels um, and also the companies within their buying process, um, it is very expensive for the companies offering these channels. Um, in the example on the right side, you can see that the first and second bank, for example, um, receive no benefits, while the last bank um, get the contract with the customer. And um, in current research, um, there are some studies that have found that um, biological sex uh, may be a um, good predictor to, um, yeah, to predict the channel choices of the customers or explain the channel choices, but some studies uh, didn't have any uh, found uh, effect, uh, didn't found any effects um, um, with the biological sex to explain. And so, in total, um, they believe, the researchers believe that uh, the demographic variables didn't play a significant role in explaining these channel choices. So now um, we need a new approach and our idea was to explain the channel choices with um, personality characteristics. Um, in particular, we have used the gender schema theory to explain um, channel choices because uh, the theory was uh, used in many studies before to explain the usage um, and the adopting from new technologies. Um, moreover, to derive um, from gender schema, um, psychological gender roles. We have used the BAM sex role inventory. Um, and as we cannot rely on established theories and uh, models in this context um, with gender schema theory um, and channel choice, that so we have to uh, test two effects, um, a direct and a moderating effect. And in particular, we have uh, we propose the following research questions. Uh, what is the direct effect of biological um, sex and psychological gender roles on online channel choice? And the second one is how do biological sex and psychological gender roles um, moderate the relationship of perceived benefits and internet trust on ch online channel choice? And this leads me to um, how we've constructed our research. Um, and as I mentioned, uh, we have used the gender schema theory to explain um, the channel choices. Um, it is a theory that was investigated by Sandra Bem in 1981. And uh, the theory claims that information is processed through the to the lens of socially constructed gender schema. Um, yeah, this in turn impacts the behavior of individuals um, 
that they um, act in accordance to their own role. Um, and this gender schema influences both. It influences the processing of uh, social information and the self-esteem. Um, yeah, as I mentioned, the theory has been used um, in several uh, studies to, uh, to explain the usage and the adoption of IT technologies. So we thought that it would be um, an adequate theory um, yeah, for our approach. Um, especially, we have used the BAM sexual inventory, which is also um, developed by Sandra BAM, um, to derive um, um, socially constructed gender roles. Um, the, the inventory um, consisted about 60 characteristics, of which each 20 were um, feminine, masculine, and neutral traits. And then we can derive uh, gender types that are feminine, masculine, androgynous, and undifferentiated. But in our studies, we have concentrated on the, um, the two important ones, which was uh, masculine and feminine. Um, and yeah, finally, we have, uh, have to say that we have uh, um, used a more up-to-date inventory, which only consisted um, 10 masculine and 10 feminine traits. Um, apart from gender schema theory, we have used um, other determinants um, that are used to ex explain the channel choices, and we've decided to use two very important uh, determinants, which were um, internet trust and perceived benefits. Um, these two constructs were uh, has all, have always been used in earlier studies to explain the channel choices and are very established. Um, and as we cannot rely here on uh, a research model in this context, um, we, we choose to um, the model of channel choices from Kim as an example for our models. And yeah, finally, um, there you can see on the right side our two models for the moderating effect and the um, direct effect above. Um, I disclaim to show you all the hyp hypotheses in details, but um, we believe that the, the male participants and the participants with a high masculinity score um, are more often using the online channel, and um, in, in contrast, the feminine um, the, f the feminine um, participants and the females were using the branch more often. Um, uh, similar at the second model, with, um, which measures the moderating effect of the psychological gender roles, um, there we have a very belief that um, the relationship of internet trust and online channel choice is uh, more associated with um, the uh, femininity and the relationship of perceived benefits and online channel choice is more associated with the masculinity. Um, to test these two models, we have conducted two studies, an online survey and a lab experiment. And yeah, I will show you the methods and the details of these studies. Um, um, yeah, we have uh, conducted two studies, an online survey and a lab experiment. We choose to um, uh, conduct the studies in the financial services industry because the industry has been offering multiple channels uh, for many years. And we've used a checking account at the first study and a student loan at the second study. Um, yeah, and you can see that the sample characteristics were almost the same at both studies, except the sample size. <laughs> Um, yeah, at the pictures you can have an uh, impression of how the studies looked like. Um, the first study, the online survey, um, was introduced with a uh, hypothetical situation of a bank, um, and the participants had finally choose um, between the online channel and the branch for contracting for a checking account. 
Um, same as the lab experiment. Same for the lab experiment. They uh, got a fictitious um, banking website and they had to inform themselves about the student loan and as well as in study one, they had finally choose the online channel or the branch uh, and have to decide where they would like to contract for the student loan. Yeah, this finally leads me to the results of the two studies. And at first I will show you the results of the um, biological sex. And as you can see in the tables below, there are um, gender differences visible, um, but the differences were too little that they turned out as significant in the statistical tests. Um, yeah, but there's a preference for, um, for example, the males uh, choosing the online channel more than the branch and uh, the females choosing the branch more often than the online channel, as we expected. And now have a look at the box plots for the um, statistical analysis of the psychological sex. Um, and there you can see that we have separated the constructs and uh, looked at the channel choices separately. Um, so at the le left box plot, you can see that the masculinity uh, score for the participants was um, uh, higher for choosing the online channel, and um, in contrast, the femininity score was um, higher for choosing the branch. And this is exactly what we um, expected. But now have a look at the detailed statistical analysis. And um, we have here tested the two models. In the first table, you can see the results of model one and study one. And then uh, you can see that um, the direct effects in the table one turned out as not significant. Um, but you, interestingly, is about uh, the T value, that the T value um, estimate is negative at this point, and this indicates that um, yeah, the relationship between, or the influence of femininity on online channel choice is uh, negatively associated. And yeah, if you have um, conducted a larger sample, it may be significant, but we don't know this. Um, at the second table below, you can see the results of the model two in study one, and um, you see that the, uh, the relationship of internet trust and online channel choice is um, significant. That means that the relationship is moderated by the femininity. Um, and yeah, so we can only partly support our hypoth hypothesis in the um, second model. Uh, for study two, completely different results now. Um, and the first uh, table, you can see uh, the results from study two um, and model one, which uh, measured the uh, direct effect on channel choice. And um, at this point, both of the p-values um, turned out as high significant at the 10% level. And here, as you can see, the um, t-value estimate for femininity is OS. Um, uh, negative, as well as in study one, which indicates the, um, that the higher the femininity score uh, for a participant, the less likely he chooses or he or she chooses the um, online channel. Um, the model two for study two um, results in two not significant um, values for the p-value, which, um, yeah means that we cannot support our hypothesis, uh, hypothesis um, in this context. And this uh, leads me to the end, and 
In conclusion, we can support the notion that um, biological sex is um, alone not suitable for explaining channel choices because uh, both of our studies showed no direct and no moderating effect of biological sex. Um, moreover, we have use gender schema theory and personality characteristics to explain um, the channel choices and we receive um, s support from our studies um, because in study one we got a moderating effect, uh, a significant moderating effect and in study two we got um, significant direct effects of psychological um, gender roles. And yeah, so we think that um, the mixed results of our studies um, is caused by uh, using different financial products in our studies. So um, yeah, um, now I will give you some implications at the end uh, for further studies. Um, at first, as um, from marketing perspective, um, we can use the results to design the channels in the right way. Um, for example, the online channel can be designed by uh, visual design and wordings that reflect um, masculine traits. And in contrast, the brand should consider um, training the staff to um, address especially the feminine traits. Um, yeah, but to keep in mind, we are all on a gender conference. <laughs> um, we have uh, reflect the results um, from gender equality perspective and we have, uh, yeah, it would be very beneficial to outweigh uh, the disparities in channel choices um, and it is of course very important um, that we uh, change the gender schema through education and um, have a, a balanced um, propensity of uh, masculinity of masculine and feminine traits. Um, yeah, so for example, we can use um, gender sensitive IT designs um, when we are uh, designing the channels uh, to, yeah, to make the channels more attractive, to make, for example, the online channel more attractive to uh, participants with um, feminine, uh, with femininity propensity. <laughs> so, yeah, thank you for your attention. <laughs>